Now we'll talk about the derived function, more commonly referred to as the derivative. The term derivative typically refers to a function, not just a slope at a point, but can refer to a function. So far, we've done things like this. We've taken a graph, maybe we have a graph, and then based on the slope at various points, we might have graphed another function that we thought would be the derivative of this one. Uh, in this case, maybe something like this. Um, and that's, that's just an approximation, graphing by hand. And we've also taken functions that we knew, like maybe this function is some cubic function, y equals 2x cubed minus 3x plus 1, something like that, 2x cubed. And we've used a difference quotient to find the slope at a point. But what if we want to actually find this function? Well, we could uh, start plotting some points. We could find the difference quotient at a bunch of little bunch of points and then plot points, but that would be very tedious, very time consuming, and we can't really do it for an infinite number of points. What we want to do is find the actual function, the mathematical definition, not for the original function, but for the derivative of that function. Now, it does seem plausible that such a function should exist. This function the original function has a value at any given point, but it also has a slope at any given point. So for any x value, this will have a particular slope. And the function that we're looking for, the derivative, tells us the slope of the original function at any point x. And if we call our original function f of x, it's common to refer to the derivative of that as f primed of x. And again, that's just a notation, the little, the little prime mark. Again, doesn't have anything to do with prime numbers, but it distinguishes the derivative from our original function. Now, suppose we have some function, some curve in the plane. We can think of that as being made up of a bunch of little tiny segments. Imagine a bunch of little tiny straight line segments. And each of those little segments has a slope. Now to be accurate, we need to think of this curve as being made of an infinite number of infinitely short straight line segments. And if we were to take one of these little segments, say a little tiny segment there, and we imagine calculating a change in x, and then vertically a change in y, then we can find the slope delta y over delta x. That would be the slope of that little segment. But if this segment is infinitely short, then it's really just a point. And our delta x is 0, and our delta y would be 0, and our calculation of the slope, delta y over delta x, becomes 0 over 0. So we could find the derivative at a point by using a difference quotient and taking a limit. But how do we do this for every point? There are an infinite number of points along that graph. That is the problem. And that's the problem we're going to solve now once and for all. We will find the slope of an infinite number of infinitely small segments all at once in one elegant and brilliant m maneuver here. We'll use the generic variables x and f of x, or if you prefer, x and y. But these concepts can apply to any variables that can be related by a mathematical function. Distance and time, pressure and altitude, or a variety of other different variables that can be related. The technique that we're going to develop has broad and deep applicability. So we're just looking at some generic variables, x and y, but these concepts apply in a host of practical applications. So here we go. All right, let's take our axes, and suppose we have some curve in the plane, and let's take some value x here. And let's say that x corresponds to this point, which we'll call p. Now imagine some other point up here on the curve, which we call q. Now our goal is to find the slope at point p, or the slope of the function for a given value of x. Now we can draw in this segment, this secant line, PQ, and the word secant just means to cut. This, this secant here cuts through our original curve. We can draw that and we can find the slope, and the slope of segment PQ will be an approximation to the slope at point P.
and the slope at point P is what we're looking for. Now the closer Q is to P, this point right here, if it is really close to P, then we have a better approximation. So we're going to let point Q slide down the curve. So I'll draw another picture and imagine my curve here and here's here's my X value and at this point P. Now imagine point Q and it's helpful to actually think of it moving. It's sliding down the curve toward point P. As Q approaches P, that segment, the slope of this segment connecting P and Q, approaches the slope of the line tangent to the graph at point P. It approaches the slope of the function at point P. We can examine that slope mathematically because we understand the def mathematical definition of slope. So let's draw this. Here's x and here's our y-axis. And so let's imagine a point x here and the corresponding y value is f of x. And then let's imagine another point here and this interval we'll call delta x. So this x value here is x plus delta x. And the y value that corresponds to that is f of x plus delta x. I'm going to move this over. Hold on a second. I just want a little more room to write there. This is f of x plus delta x. Now the slope, the slope of this segment right there connecting those two points. Okay, if we, again we called this point P and this point Q. So the slope of segment PQ is just going to be the rise over run. So it's going to be this rise and we can write that as f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Just think the high minus the low over my run. And the run here is delta x. If you say x plus delta x minus x, it's just delta x. And I'm going to move that x over there just to... That's indicating our x-axis here this point is x plus delta x right there. Okay, so that's the slope of PQ. Now the thing we're doing is we're imagining point Q sliding down this curve toward point P. And as Q approaches P, delta x approaches zero. And we can find the slope at point P by taking the limit. So the slope at this x value, I'll say the slope at x. That's going to be the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And that is the mathematical definition of a derivative. For a given function f of x, we can evaluate this limit. And when we do, we don't just get a number, we get a new function. And that function is f prime. That's the derivative of f, and that is very cool. And we'll do an example and show, actually show you an example. We'll do a lot of examples, but show you some examples of actually calculating some functions using this formula. But first I want to show you another notation that this is commonly written in. This is another way to write the exact same thing. Let's imagine you have your x-axis and f of x, and there's your curve and we have some x value here which corresponds to a y value which we'll call f of x and then the horizontal interval instead of calling it delta x sometimes people call that h so this point right here is x plus h and that corresponds to a y value of f of x plus h. And then the derivative f prime of x is going to be the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h 
minus f of x all over h. That's the exact same thing we saw earlier, just in a different notation. We're just using the h instead of delta x. The, um, the, it's just a little less cluttered to use the h instead of the delta x, but it's the exact same thing. And you should recognize this as a slope calculation. This is a rise right here over the run right there. That is the definition of a derivative.